Good evening, GIBC students. I hope you're well and the Lord is good. Today we'll be looking at topic 32, just to look at it and make sure. We are still continuing with the five-fold gifts. Okay, remember, we have been looking at the five-fold gifts. Right now, I'm going to be emphasizing on the evangelist as we look at topic 32. Now, when you look at our first scripture, it is Ephesians chapter 4 and verses 11. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time you have given us. Come lead us, come guide us, come enlighten the eyes of our understanding. Come give us revelation of God. Come speak through me, mighty Father. We pray and ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and everyone says, Amen and Amen. I'm so excited about the evangelist. Okay, I'm so excited about the evangelist. As you, most of you always hear, it is they, I am they. It is one of those fields. It's one of that calling or gifting that you have had me there. And I really, 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 really want to say that it's so important that we learn from each other. Some of us might be stronger in a certain gifting. Some are stronger in a certain area. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's so important that we learn from each other. And I pray that by the end of this uh, teaching, you would have learned something amazing, something that can edify you from this fivefold gifting of the evangelist. So when we look at the definition, the Greek, in the Greek word, it is igengeliso. Okay, so igengeliso, to announce good news or glad tidings. The qualification of an evangelist must have, remember, for every fivefold gifting, First Timothy chapter 3 and Titus chapter 3 applies. An evangelist too, just like the other fivefold callings, must have the character qualifications of an elder. Now you can go and read that and find out more. There's a couple of things that um, Paul wrote to Timothy to just give him guidelines regarding uh, people who are called into ministry but the first qualification is the qualifications of an elder. Now let's go deeper into the ministry of evangelist. The first point that you must understand about an evangelist is they will have a passion for souls and soul saving ministry. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 25. A true witness delivers souls, but a deceitful witness speaks lies. I can assure you right now, an evangelist will have a heart for souls, a passion that is beyond other fivefold um, ministries. They just carry this passion for souls. They don't all have to be in a place where they they use the same formula. Some evangelists are so so um, should I say so passionate about, for example the open door which or open open air open air ministry which can be tent evangelism uh crusades others are so onto one on one others uh, don't preach 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 like when we talk about preaching most people think that evangelists have to stand somewhere and all of them have to like project their voice, preach. Some evangelists are soft-spoken, others. So I have seen that over the years we have gotten to a place whereby people actually get to describe evangelists according to how they deliver the word, just like the other fivefold ministries. Each one, God, just the Holy Spirit comes and also comes in with personality a bit. The delivery of the word does not determine that that person is an evangelist. It is more about the passion they carry. An evangelist is going to carry a passion for souls. Even when they are teaching, they will be such a passion to win souls. Even when they are in the marketplace, at the workplace, they will have this a, a special um, passion for souls and an evangelist carries that. I look at my son and it is amazing how God works. He is um, 
in grade nine. And I remember yesterday when we were praying, he was, we we're having our family prayer and he was like, I want you to pray for me. Uh, he was telling us to pray for him so that he can, he wants to, to just witness to his classmates. There's this specific classmates he wants to witness to. And uh, this is not the first time he, <laughs> he, God has given him the grace to do that. But I assure he's an evangelist. Not only that, you can literally be walking with him in a mall or something. He just has this heart to see specific things. You will see that guy outside um, asking for a one rand. <laughs> South Africans know what I mean. <clears throat> and he will look for it, not because he just wants to give. But as he's giving, he will say, Jesus loves you. So he has this passion to for souls. And I assure you, as young as someone might be, an evangelist has a specific passion for souls. And they will do anything and anywhere. They will just want to win souls for Christ. The second point is, we'll have signs following their ministry. Mark chapter 16 verses 15 to 20. It's a long one, please. Let's go together. And he said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, verse 16, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will not, will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, they will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. And then after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of the Father. Verse 20. And they went out, preached everywhere, the Lord walking with them, confirming the word through accompanying signs. Amen. Now when you look at these scriptures here, it is so important to see that when an evangelist goes out to the world and an evangelist is really, really called to project the good news to the non-believers, believe me or not, if you are a non-believer and when before you gave your life to Christ, you want evidence. You don't just want words. You want evidence. If someone comes and says to you, if you believe in Jesus Christ, you'll be healed and now you are sick and there's no evidence of it, you would feel like they're lying. And an evangelist follows with signs and wonders. Their ministry has signs and wonders as they go out there. Why? Because they are carrying the good news to the non-believer. And the good news come with signs. The non-believer wants to see. And as they see, they believe. They will have wisdom in winning souls. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he who wins souls is wise. Um, an evangelist or evangelists are given such a special wisdom on how to deliver and win souls. I can say to you something. You know, I can go to them. I can go to the prison ministry. I do prison ministry. I do hospital ministry. I also sometimes do, um, we will look at all the types of evangelism. I sometimes also do one-on-one, -on -one. not sometimes, I do one-on-one -on -one a lot. And um, um, open air, which we can call uh, the tents, door-to-door, -door, is not my strongest, but I do door-to-door -door when it's needed, when we have a group of people that I will need to go with. And just, you know what, we are in an area and we just want to go to door to door. But I want to say this, that um, as we are talking about the word wisdom, as an evangelist, you're going to find that God gives you um, tools of wisdom in the different areas of evangelism. The way I win someone over in prison is not the same way I am going to deliver the good news to the people in hospital and it's going to be a bit different again when I am going door to door or when I'm doing street evangelism. So it is so important to understand that God gives you wisdom. Like the moment you just say to God, God use me, I am available and you move your feet 
I remember the first few times that I had to witness, like to go out. I remember the first time it was door to door. I was so scared, but I was also excited. I was scared because I was asking myself, what am I going to say? I don't know what to say. And the Holy Spirit said, I will tell you what to say and how to say it. And the moment you are willing, you should not be worried. The Holy Spirit gives you words of wisdom. And it is so amazing that the different areas that you go to just to win souls, the Holy Spirit changes a new tactic, gives you a different tactic. And it's always amazing on how you will speak differently in prison or how I speak differently in prison and how I'm going to also uh, speak differently in the in the hospital ministry i'm not saying like i'm not speaking the word of god but the technique of wisdom that the holy spirit gives you is different so an evangelist is going to have this have a lot of wisdom when winning souls uh we can see here also another point is that they will have a compelling ministry to bring sinners to the gospel feast Luke chapter 14, verse 23 to 24. Then the master said to the servant, go out into the highways and hedges, compel them to come in that my house may be filled. For I said to you that none of these men who were invited shall test my supper. You know what I love about this statement? It says here, compel them to come in. That is an evangelist. We go out there and we compel the lost, the souls. And I'm telling you, they come in. If we are intentional, they always come in. What is so amazing about an evangelist is that they don't, they don't get satisfied. An evangelist doesn't get satisfied. They can be witnessing this morning. And they witness to like, and they were able to lead 300 people to Christ and in the afternoon they are still passionate about leading someone else to Christ. So they, they, they come and they compel and not only compel, but they also bring sinners to the gospel feast. I love the word the gospel feast. And through the wisdom and the tactics that the Holy Spirit gives them, but also the passion that the evangelists carry, they compel people, they bring people. They have a special grace and an anointing to compel people into the kingdom of God. They will not be a ministry in the local church. So the evangelists, as you see here, have been called to the lost. They will be called to the world, which is the lost to bring the lost in and when it comes to the church i believe they awaken a passion for the body of christ to for the lost that is what i know <laughs> i can just be teaching i can just be doing something and i want to say to you <laughs> that part that is passionate about souls always comes through evangelists also a kind of awaken a passion for the body of Christ to direct them to the lost, to the cause of the loss, and they awaken such a passion even for the other fivefold offices. They awaken that passion for them to desire to come in and get into the harvest fields. Different areas of evangelism that I'm quickly going to look at house to house evangelism acts chapter 2 verse 42 and 47 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers acts chapter 2 and verse 47 praising god and having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily those who were being saved one area that is very instrumental that we could see in the new testament in the book of acts that was so instrumental is house to house evangelism now you can look in acts chapter 2 and verse 42 it says here they continued in fellowship breaking bread they were in house daily they were fellowshipping in the house and which today we call the home cells okay so 
home sales are one of the most influential ways in which we can actually um, reach out to the lost. In how can we do that? So right now on Father's Heart here on this network, we have fellowship groups. Now, let me give you an example of a fellowship group that is in a certain area. And the Christians, they are fellowship together. They come into that home. In the, in the book of Acts, as they came to that home, they invited their neighbors. They invited their family members who had come to visit. They invited their, their, the friend of their friends, okay, who had popped in to just say hi. They invited them. Do you know I'm going next door? We are having a fellowship. And people gave their life to Christ. And the church increased in the book of Acts. It is the same tool that we use today and that is so powerful, but I don't feel it is being used to the fullest. House to house evangelism is a very important tool that can be used to bring souls into the body of Christ, whereby we can fellowship and make sure we invite our neighbors. When your neighbor comes over for that tea and cake, when your neighbor comes over to just, you know what, talk to you about what is happening in her marriage and, and the kids, how they're giving her such a hard time. That is the opportunity for you to invite her and say, you know what, we actually have a small group of fellowship that we meet together here. Would you like to come? And your family comes over for a week. Family member, a friend comes over for a week, maybe from another area to just visit you. Why not go with them? to your fellowship group, because let me tell you something, that is a very, very awesome strategic way in which we can win souls. Then we have child evangelism, Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, but Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not be forbid them, for, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Yes, it is so important to understand that another area that can be reached out are children, there are so many areas in which we can reach the children. Number one, our children, if they are well empowered, can actually reach other kids. Our children, if they are so connected to the love of God and understand the love of God and we become intentional about it, they can touch other lives. I, my two children, I can tell you now, it's because we are so intentional about praying for others and going an extra mile to speak about Christ to others. They do talk about this even with their friends at school. Can come back with testimonies and tell me, you know, my friend today was not feeling well at all. And you know what, mommy, I just told her, let me pray for you. And after I prayed for her, she felt better. And then I explained to her, you know what? God loves you. That is why he has healed you. As simple as that. And they get an opportunity to, do you know what? To introduce Christ to someone. It doesn't have to be hectic. Also, our children can get to know about this. Or children out there can be reached by the schools whereby we go in. We need to reach out to the schools. I was able to have knowledge about Jesus Christ through school. Someone came to our class when I was younger, talked about Jesus. Did I receive Jesus then? No, I didn't. But I became aware of him. And I, I started a journey. It was a seed that they planted in me at school. Someone came. And another group came and they came as they came. That seed was planted. That seed was watered. Eventually at the university, that is when I fully now gave my life to Christ. Did my journey start at the university? No, it started at school. Kids at school need Jesus. And I pray that we as evangelists and as the body of church can go in there. Some schools are not allowing it, but I want to tell you some schools are open to allowing the gospel. But if they are not allowing it, then what about the teachers? Some teachers, you are on this network, you are a teacher. You are a child of God. 
And let me tell you something, you can reach out to those kids. I'm not telling you to stand in the class and tell them who wants to receive Jesus Christ in your life today. But pray for those children. And be intentional. God will bring you one. God will specifically do something. Be intentional about it. You will be amazed. So child evangelism is another awesome tool. Number three, rest home evangelism. Psalm 71 verse 9, do not cast me off in the time of old age. Do not forsake me when my strength fail. Old age homes are another tool or another area of evangelism. I remember recently last year, we went to an old age home. One of the well-known old age homes here is huge. It was huge and we're a group of around, um, if I may say, around seven, eight. But we were able to experience uh, such an amazing openness to the word of God. Yes, you had a couple of them that, you know, were grumpy <laughs> and did not want to hear about this Jesus. But we had a couple of them, some recommitting their lives to Christ, others giving their lives to Christ. And we were so appreciative to see how God was working, even in this specific group of people. Hospital ministry. Matthew chapter 25, verse 36 and 46. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. Please look at this. Jesus is using this, if you can read the word of God, as a way to say, don't come near me. I don't know you. Because I was sick. And you did not visit me. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. These are important keys. So hospital evangelism is one of the most awesome areas. People are open. You know, weekly or every other week we go to hospital ministry. And we go to one of the main public hospitals in this area. And we switch. It's not just one. We switch like three hospitals. Uh, the other week we go to another one. But I want to say something here. When people are in hospital, hospital has a way to humble someone. <laughs> it's the same as the prison ministry. It humbles people. When you get to people in hospital, you have the grumpy ones. But people are so open to receiving Christ. And those are opportunities we should use to actually introduce, uh, give Christ to people in hospital take christ and the gospel to people in hospital not just that they desperate but some of them at that particular moment actually need him and then we have the home bible class evangelism okay so acts chapter 20 verses 18 to 21 and when they had come to him he said to them you know from the first day that i came to Asia in which manner I always lived among you, serving the Lord with all humility, with many tears and trials which happened to me by the piloting of the Jews. How I kept back nothing that was helpful but proclaimed to you and told you publicly and from house to house, testifying to Jews and also to Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus. So this is another awesome tool, home Bible class evangelism. This is a tool that I was using with house to house. So let me clarify this. Home, home Bible class evangelism is whereby we gather together and we use that fellowship or cell meeting to bring others. The one I explained in the beginning. So to correct uh, what I explained in the beginning, house to house evangelism is whereby we go door to door. We knock. I know we have seen the Jehovah's Witnesses do this. We knock door to door and we bring the gospel to people's homes. Okay. And I, I, I just had such an experience with the house to house. <laughs> house to house can go anywhere. You get there, you knock some of the homes by their gates. They have dogs. Evangelism is challenging, but it's such a joy. Some homes, they don't want to see you, which is which is okay. You know, you know that as they, they, they don't want to see you, you have left God there. You have left peace there. The home where they receive you will be amazed. We did house to house evangelism and we had a full family. 
We saw a family healed. We saw a full family give their life to Christ. I'm not talking about fake crying on tears, tears on their knees. So this is also an awesome tool. And I'm talking about house to house, but also home Bible evangelism. Class evangelism is an awesome tool that can be used. Number six, personal evangelism, which we call one-on-one. -on -one. So when we talk about one-on-one, -on -one, and it's here, Acts chapter 8, verse 27 to 40, which I'm probably, I will read just now. <laughs> it's too many verses, but I'm going to try my level best to try and read it. Um, when it comes to personal evangelism, it is one-on-one -on -one evangelism. And this is one of the most common ways of evangelizing. This area is, um, if you are looking at me right now and you are saying, I'm so scared to go house to house, knock on people's gates and doors and ring their bells. You know what? It is fine. There will be areas where you don't feel very comfortable. But one of the most comfortable ways and areas of evangelism is personal evangelism, whereby you sit with someone, <clears throat> maybe a colleague at work, and you talk to them and they, they feel interested to learn more. And you say, you know what, after work we can, or in our tea time, we can sit down. Or you, you, you're walking and you decide to have a one-on-one -on -one with someone. I've done this so many times in a shopping uh, sh a shop supermarket where I speak to someone hi how are you doing and they say they are good they are well and I say to them oh you look you 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 look you look tired are you okay then they are like yo I'm not okay and I start my one-on-one -on -one evangelism but what is so amazing is every area of evangelism comes with such a grace with such a wisdom one-on-one -on -one is heart to heart and you get to share your personal testimony with this one-on-one -on -one. i also love so much the one-on-one -on -one because with one-on-one -on -one, the person doesn't feel like they are together with someone else and also one-on-one -on -one, the prophetic word of wisdom word of knowledge word of understanding comes quicker i don't know about you but but it comes quicker and you are able to sense and have enough time with this one person. So these evangelism areas are all effectively powerful if taken correctly. So with one-on-one, -on -one, uh, remember it's Acts chapter 8 verse 27 to 40, which I'm not going to read. Please find time and read. And then we have what we call public or mass evangelism that sometimes in South Africa that we call the tent Tent evangelism, okay, or what we call crusades, or what we call the huge open air, it can be a stadium, and that we have here Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to verse 26. This is flat out the one whereby people stand and one person starts speaking to the whole group. It can be a preacher, an evangelist. We saw this in Acts. When we saw the apostles do that to a group of people, this is such an effective way of evangelism whereby people are called in groups, those who want to give their life to Christ. I would like to say this is a quick way to get many, okay? to receive Christ and to deliver the gospel. But you have to understand if it is a mass evangelism, there has to be, um, what, do I, what do we call it, follow-up. And all the areas of evangelism that I'm talking about have to have follow-up or you will have people get through the net and back. So I believe and I pray that you have learned something. When we do evangelize, whether it's one-on-one -on -one house or a cell Bible evangelism, please make sure you follow up. Follow up on people. Follow up if they have been able to find a church, if they have been able to connect to a group. Follow up and try your best. If you are not from that area, try to connect that person to a church to a cell, a Bible cell, but try to connect them to someone who is in the area. Let us not just evangelize and people get out of the net and back. God bless you and I pray and I hope you have learned something amazing this evening.